2008 15-inch MacBook Pro keyboard replacement. Please note the difficulty of this installation. This is the hardest installation on this MacBook, and the logic board and DVD drive will have to be removed. Make sure that the MacBook is shut down and flip it over. Battery removal. Unlock the battery lever on the left side and lift up the battery panel. Pull out the battery by its tab. Main cover removal. The main cover is attached with eight Phillips head screws. There are four in the top, three of them long and one short one. The one in the top left is the short one that should be removed first. Then the long three Phillips head screws. On the bottom there are distinctly smaller Phillips head screws and there are four of them. Go ahead and remove those. You can go ahead and lift up and remove the cover now. Logic board removal. Begin by disconnecting the left and the right system fans. They're both held in with three Phillips head screws each. Remove the screws, but don't take them out of the fan. This will be easier to track them. Lift up the fan and disconnect the fan connection to the logic board. Remove the other fan the same exact way. Disconnect it, put it aside. Disconnect the LVDS cable. Lift up on the lever lock and flip it over. Then pull out the cable gently. Be careful, this is a fragile connection. Familiarize yourself with the nine logic board connections going around the contour of the logic board. Disconnect the keyboard backlight first. There's a lever. In this video, the lever is missing because it's been broken off. Pull up the lever and pull out the cable. Disconnect the Wi-Fi and the EyeSight cable by gently pulling it to the left. Disconnect the DVD da data cable. Next, disconnect the right speaker. Disconnect the hard drive cable. Disconnect the sleep light indicator. It has a tiny little lever that you have to pull up. Once it's up, you can go ahead and pull the cable out. Disconnect the trackpad next, just by pulling it up. Disconnect the battery life indicator. Pull up the lever and the keyboard and pry it out of the connection as well. Pull up the lever on the express card. Pull that out. Remove the seven Phillips head logic board screws. In this video I point out six and the seventh one is missing on this board. Its location is circled in red. Lift up the board slightly, but not all the way, as there's one more connection before we flip the board over. It's your battery connector. Go ahead, get your screwdriver underneath the connector and pry it out. Now you can lift up and flip over the board. We'll need to disconnect the DC and power board. Keyboard removal. Begin by removing the three Phillips head screws securing the DVD drive in place. When you remove them, just put them on top of the drive in their respective position. This will make it easier to track them. Go ahead and lift up the drive at the bottom right corner and slide it out. Remove the mid wall. It's being fastened with two Phillips head screws, one in the top and one in the bottom. Go ahead and remove those screws, but leave them in place. 
leaving screws in place allows you to drag them carefully. Remove the two power button screws. Once the power button screws have been removed, go ahead and gently pry up on the power button cable. It's kind of glued into the case. Once you pry out the power button, just push it over to the side. Pry in and remove the three keyboard layers. You can do this with nails or tweezers. The first layer is the actual backlight. The second layer is the plastic white distribution layer. And the third layer is the black shadow mask layer. It might be glued in pretty hard but it is definitely removable. Try not to tear it, so go really slow when you're pulling this out. Remove the mid divider that's screwed in with five Phillips head screws. The first three screws pointed out are black and the second two are silver. Leave them in place, but unscrew them. Now you can remove the divider. Remove the four Phillips head screws securing the express card. You can now lift up and remove the express card. Now you have access to all keyboard screws. Remove the 51 Phillips head screws securing the keyboard in place. After it's removed, it should look something like this. Keyboard installation. Secure the keyboard by putting it into place and securing it with 51 Phillips head screws. After that's completed, use the guide holes on the backlight layers to place it in correctly. Reinstall the express card. Secure it with the four Phillips head screws. The longer two screws are on the left side and the shorter ones are in the back. Reinstall the mid divider. Gently place it in. Make sure that it's not trapping any cables. Secure the two silver Phillips head screws first, then the three black screws. Tuck in the power button. This might be a little tricky. Just work it in there. Make sure the bottom is part of the button is down. Secure it with the two Phillips head screws. You can now install the mid wall. Secure it with the two Phillips head screws. Install the DVD drive, leave the screws on top, and just slide it into position, drop it in. Now secure the three Phillips head screws. The 
keyboard installation is done. Logic board installation. Go ahead and connect the DCN power board first. Flip the board over and insert it in at an angle. Push cables out of the way as you insert in the board. We're going to need to make the battery connection first. This is the most difficult connection to make. With tweezers, go ahead and pry in the keyboard connection. This can be easily done by taking out the mid divider. For this video, we will not be taking out the mid divider as this is a professional installation. Push away all the connections. Go around the board and pry out all of the connections. Make sure that nothing is trapped. Once the board is seated correctly, go over each and every one of the connections before screwing in the board, prying anything out that was left over. Make sure that every single connection is visible. Position the board. Reinstall the seven Phillips head screws. And again, in this video, I reinstall six screws Make sure not to forget the seventh screw that I'm labeling with a red circle. Connect the keyboard backlight first. Again, in this example, the backlight lever is broken, but you'll need to pull it up, push the connection in, and put it down. Now connect the Wi-Fi and the iSight cable. Next, connect the DVD data cable. Connect the speaker. Connect the hard drive cable. These cables are just push-in connections. Connect the trackpad. For the sleep indicator, push up the lever and slide the connection in. Once it's all the way in, go ahead and push down on the eyelash. Next, connect the battery life indicator. Position it over the socket and click it in. Next, connect the keyboard. Make sure that the eyelash is up when you're sliding it in. If you're having a difficulty with this connection, go ahead and watch the mid divider removal video. This will make it easier to put that in. Reconnect the express card cable, again lifting up the eyelash and sliding it into the connection. Push down the eyelash when you're done. Reconnect the LVDS cable. Make sure that the lock is up. Slide it into the slot. Push the lock lever over to lock it in place. Be very careful with this connection because it's very fragile. Install both fans back into the sockets. Secure them with the three Phillips head screws. Make sure to reconnect the fans.
once both fans are secure and plugged in, the logic board installation is finished. Main cover installation. Make sure that the lever is not locked. Place the cover on the MacBook. First, secure the one short Phillips head screw on the top left. Then the three long Phillips head screws. Now install the four distinctly smaller identical screws on the bottom of the cover. Battery installation. Insert the battery at an angle and drop it into the socket. Place the cover back on and lock it in with the battery lever latch. <laughs> 